Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting trigonometric equation. A trigonometric equation with i, the imaginary unit. So we have cosine x equals i, and we're going to be looking for x values. Now let's see how we can approach this problem. First of all, notice that the cosine of an angle is complex. So you're thinking x is probably complex too, right? Can x be real? Probably not. Anyway, so to be able to solve this problem, we're going to be using a very nice identity by Euler. Obviously, Euler is one of the greatest mathematicians, maybe the greatest. So here's the formula that we're going to be using. Cosine x plus i sine x equals e to the power ix. So this formula allows you to write a complex number in standard form in exponential form, which is very, very helpful. Now, we, our goal is to solve an equation that contains cosine of x. We don't want sine x. So we, we need to get rid of sine x. To do that, we're going to modify this formula a little bit. Since this is a general formula that's true for all values of x, real and complex, we can go ahead and replace x with something. Since I want to get rid of sine x, I, can, I think it makes sense if I replace x with negative x. Okay, replace x with negative x. And that's going to give you a something something that you can use. First of all, let's copy the first equation. And then I'm going to replace x with negative x. By the way, if I sound a little different, it's because I recorded about five, six videos and I just realized after all these recordings that the mic was off. So I have to re-record all these videos. Anyways, so we're going to replace x with negative x. So we're going to get cosine of negative x plus i sine of negative x equals e to the power negative ix. Now notice that cosine is an even function. So this is going to become cosine x. But sine is an odd function. So it's going to throw away the negative And it's going to become minus i sine x with the e to the power negative ix. And then we can go ahead and bring this here, cosine x plus i sine x equals e to the power ix. Let's go ahead and add these together. And when we add these two equ equations, we're going to get rid of sine x. Beautiful. Maybe you already memorized this formula. You already know it, but I just wanted to derive it. 2 cosine x equals e to the ix plus e to the power negative ix. Now at this point, you can divide both sides by 2. And then that's going to give you the value of cosine x. But I have a better idea. You can do that definitely. But since cosine x is equal to i, I'd like to replace cosine x with i. Let's do it. And this is going to give us 2i. Instead of solving an equation like this, which is pretty non-standard, I want to solve this equation, which is actually really, really nice. You'll see in a little bit why this equation is so nice. But let's go ahead and write the e to the power negative ix as 1 over e to the power ix. So if I use substitution here, it'll be very helpful, right? Let's call this t because t is awesome. And then this is going to be 1 over t. Make sense? So now we have t plus 1 over t equals 2i. Nice. How can I solve this equation? Easy. This is a quadratic equation. So multiply everything by t first. You're going to get t squared plus 1 equals 2i t. i t or t i, however you want to write it. Doesn't matter, I guess. And then bring everything to the left so that you can get a full quadratic. And then you have two options. How about me showing you both. The first option would be using the quadratic formula, which is pretty standard. One of the good things about the quadratic formula is 
it solves all quadratic equations. Some quadratic equations are not factorable, but you can solve them with the quadratic formula. Okay, so let's use it first. t equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared. Now you gotta be careful here. Square root of i has two values, but i squared has a single value. Make sense? It has to have a single value because it's an operation. i multiplied by i is negative one. So in this case, if you square negative two i, you're gonna get four i squared. Let's write it that way. Four b squared, right? I mean, I'm sorry, b squared minus 4ac, that's going to be 4, right? Divided by 2a, which is 2. Now, let's simplify this. i squared is negative 1. This is going to give me 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. So I get t equals 2i plus minus the square root of negative 8 divided by 2. But square root of negative 8 can be written as 2 root 2i because the square root of 8 is 2 root 2. And notice that we have i as a common factor and everything is divided by 2. So this gives us the following. 1 plus minus root 2 times i. And that is the t value, or the t values, I should say, because there is two of them, right? Okay, so this is the quadratic formula. What's the other method? The other method is I'm going to pick up from here t squared minus 2it plus 1 is equal to 0. We can subtract 1 from both sides. And the second method, this is called completing the square. I'm going to add i squared to both sides. You'll see in a little bit why. And this becomes a perfect square, t minus i squared. And this is negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. And from here, you could write negative 2 as root 2i squared, because that's what it is. And then square root both sides, consider the plus minus signs, and you'll get the following. <coughs> t minus i equals plus minus root 2i. And then put the i on the right, i plus minus root 2i, and from here t equals 1 plus minus root 2, all multiplied by i. Notice that this is not the same thing as 1 plus minus root 2i, this is different, okay? So, so this is t, and t is e to the power ix, so let's go ahead and set it equal to that. Now I'm going to write the i as um, an exponential. So I'm going to write it in, in exponential form. If you think about i, but this is multiplied by i, so it's a positive multiple of i, which is going to be on the imaginary axis. So its angle is going to be pi over 2. So we can basically, and its modulus is just going to be the coefficient, which is 1 plus root 2. And then i can be written as e to the power pi over 2 plus 2 and pi, all multiplied by i. That's what you can replace i with. And then ln both sides, ln e to the x. To keep a long story short, let me tell you, after natural logging both sides, you get ix equals ln 1 plus root 2 plus this guy over here, the exponent. Now, a lot of times uh, people are going to think about dividing by i, but I'm going to give you an alternative, which is actually, which is actually multiplying both sides by negative i which is kind of more fun, right? Let's multiply by negative i and multiply by negative i. And negative i times i is negative i squared, which is 1, so that's going to give me x. And then here, when you distribute the negative i, you're going to get the following. i times negative i is going to be negative uh, i squared again, which is 1, so I'm going to get pi over 2 plus 2 and pi without the i. And then this is going to get a negative i, so minus ln 1 plus root 2 multiply by i. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.